In this short series, I want to talk about cyprinid hybrids. People talk about hybrids left, right and centre in uh, fishing today. We get so-called F1 hybrids, which are actually a specific thing, but there is a proper biological term, F1. And I'm going to, through this series, explain different things about hybrids, how you can tell them apart from the real McCoy and try and quash a few myths about them. First of all, let's talk about that F1 bit. The F stands for filial, which only means son of, and the one stands for generation one. So an F1 just means a son of two different fish, son or daughter, and generation one. So it hasn't gone to a second generation. So a second generation hybrid would be an F2, third generation F3. The ones that we people call F1s when they say, oh, we've stopped F1s are supposed to be crucian crosses with carp, but often they're actually uh, goldfish crosses with carp or even um, goldfish crossed with crucians and so on. But a roach crossed with a rud first generation is an F1 as well. And same with a roach bream or a rud bream or a roach chub. All of these are valid hybrids. Some hybrids cause a lot of problems. Um, as far as big fish and record fish are concerned, roach rud is the one to watch out for. Um, there's suspicions that at least a couple of record fish over the years have been roach rod hybrids. Roach uh, grow to about four and a quarter pounds, maybe a tiny bit more. Rud grow to about four and a half pounds. Roach rod hybrids have been noted and tested to be five pounds. So you can see that there's the potential to have a bigger fish than the current records. And there's another thing with hybrids, especially roach rod, they're incredibly easy to catch. And often if you've got a small water with a little group of big hybrids, big roach rod hybrids, you can catch them over and over again. They're not difficult to catch. Um, a couple of waters I've fished, I've almost caught the same hybrids on successive trips. I've even caught one hybrid well over two pounds twice in an hour where there's no keep nets being used. I've put it back and uh, pulled it out again. Easily recognisable fish due to uh, uh, its fin, its dorsal fin being damaged. Another one in a local pond is just nudging two pounds. That's got a damaged lip. I've caught it at least five times now. Quite easy to catch. Of course, people catch it, catch these fish and say, oh, I've had a massive roach. I've had a two, two and a half pound roach or whatever and they're kidding themselves and it's a shame really. Um, the other fish that causes a lot of problem are crucian hybrids, uh, especially a crucian hybridized with a goldfish. Uh, there was a, such a fish in uh, Gold Valley Lakes near Farnborough. There was a fish there nearly five pounds that was caught quite frequently again and it was photographed carefully and and the real experts looked at it and said, we're not really sure on that. You need to take a scale for DNA testing. And in the end, that did happen. It was caught so often. And finally, the truth came out. This fish would have uh, beaten the British record by about five ounces or so at the time. And this fish of 414 was shown to be what it really was, a crucian goldfish cross. Another fish that causes problems are eyed, uh, also known as silver orf, orf, the golden variety, the ornamental one is a golden orf. They're all the same fish as far as species are concerned. Obviously a golden orf is uh, often carrot coloured, very bright orange. And indeed one was caught from the River Chew near Bristol back in 1973 of £3.14 and a half, bright orange fish. And People said, oh, we've caught, I've caught a record roach. And it was, at that time, it was killed. And when the uh, scientist who supported the record fish committee looked at it, he said, well, it's a very nice fish, but it's a golden orf. 
at that time the record gold north i don't know if there was one but it was, certainly wasn't that big so instead of it becoming a record roach because the record was 314 then it became a new record off uh, roach chub hybrids get confused with eyed because the, the basic body shape looks similar but the moment you do a lateral line scale count with the eyed or off it's somewhere in the high 50s usually and with a roach chub it's probably going to be in the mid 40s and that's quite a big difference you just immediately know that it's one or the other uh, the river ribble up in lancashire produces a lot of roach chub hybrids probably more than any other water but they do turn up um, on the thames or the my local river the dorset stour they're quite rare apart from on the ribble I'd, on the other hand, were stocked in the early 70s in quite a few of the Yorkshire rivers and the, they got into the Trent as well. They were brought in in huge consignments of roach from Belgium and they've established themselves as a breeding population. So they're more common in certain parts of the country. They're often found in still waters in uh, commercial fisheries. How do you tell? Well, in this little series I'm going to look at specifically roach rod hybrids in the next program and also some of the crucian hybrids in another program it comes down to a whole load of factors you can't well with experience you can often look at some hybrids like a roach bream hybrid and you just look at it and you say that's not a roach and it's not a bream it's somewhere in between and I'm pretty certain it's a roach bream hybrid but that's a fish that gets confused with a silver bream if it's not too big. Just to add to the fun, silver bream have their own hybrids. They can hybridise with bronze bream, with roach, with rud. And there are one or two other ones um, like the bleak chub hybrid. So sometimes someone catches what they think is a record bleak of about six ounces. And it's actually a chub bleak hybrid, something that's turned up in the uh, River Wye, the Thames, my local Dorset Stour and elsewhere probably a fish that people don't spot because most of them are going to be half an ounce or an ounce or so. So let's go back to what are the things you can look at. If you've got really good photos, you need photos clear enough that you can do for a start a lateral line scale count. That's going to help with goldfish crucians, uh, roach bream hybrids. Not so much with a roach rod hybrid because the lateral line scale count for a roach and that for a rud, they're very, very close. The scales on rud are very slightly bigger. There's mostly, on average, slightly less scales on that lateral line. But it's a starting point for some hybrids. The second thing is to get good photos, clear photos of the fins of the fish, the dorsal fin, the anal fin, which is the one just by their vent and the tail. And you can do counts of the rays. There are hard rays and soft rays. There are figures available for each of the species. One of the problems is there aren't really figures available for the hybrids. The hybrids tend to be somewhere in between a sort of average of the two. But there is a bit of a problem there, as we'll see. Next, you need a good, clear shots of the head. Uh, the position of the mouth will vary. A roach has uh, a mouth that's generally downward pointing. So the top lip tends to be slightly over the bottom lip. With the rud, it's the opposite, this upward pointing mouth. Same with crucians. Uh, some other species, uh, you'll see this with the roach bream hybrids. The mouth isn't the same as a roach or a bream. It's somewhere in between. You've got that protruding mouth on a bream. Not so much on a roach. Going away from cyprinids for a second. Sea trout and salmon are often confused, especially the very big ones. And the size of the mouth does vary with those two. There are other things with salmon and sea trout. Not something I'm going to cover in this series. 
Now, coloration can vary between fish. It can be a clue. It's not the absolute. There are all sorts of variants of fish that most people don't know about. Um, with rudd, the common variant is the golden rudd, but you can get golden roach as well. There's a second variant with rudd called a yellow fin rudd, where the fins are a sort of pale yellow colour. It doesn't have the sort of redness of the fins of a rudd. With the roach rudd hybrids, the fins are often much denser in colour, more opaque than they are with a true roach. But with um, colour processing in cameras, you often don't get the true colours. Uh, the colours can be uh, set, the colour settings in a camera are quite varied. I could change the colour of this video, for instance, very easily. In processing afterwards and the, there are camera settings when I'm videoing as well on light balance and all the rest of it so it is important to see the colors because it may give you an immediate clue to what you're looking at but don't solely rely on it there are other things that can be used to help identify a hybrid one thing is the pharyngeal teeth which are the throat teeth in roach and rudd for instance one reason never ever ever put your finger down a chub's throat it's got some pretty nasty teeth down there that it uses for crunching crayfish and things like that and you could end up with a lacerated finger the problem with throat teeth is you've got to kill the fish to dissect it to take the teeth out then you've got to know what you're looking at with the teeth um, that method was used in the, the distant past 40 and 50 years ago even then expert opinion sometimes said oh, I think it's a roach I think it's a rudd this happened with Burt Brown's record roach of 1964 which equaled Bill Penny's roach from 1938 which was a fish that was set up and a Dr Jack Jones thought that it was a true roach Dick Walker and Alwyn Wheeler thought it wasn't it did stay on the record books it shows it comes down to interpretation the modern method for which I thought there might be a lot more hope is DNA testing and the British Record Fish Committee has adopted DNA testing to uh, for certain species like crucians roach and rudd DNA testing involves removing a scale or taking a slime, slime sample or a fin clipping. The trouble with the slime sample and the fin clipping is you have to keep it in pure ethanol and unless you have access to a science lab you can't buy pure ethanol for obvious reasons. And that obvious reason is you'd make your own hooch. But a scale sample will preserve a DNA sample for a fairly long time and uh, kept in a clean hook packet it does seem to uh, work and the thing about a DNA test is that you get a 99% certainty on whether something is a true species or a hybrid on an F1 a first generation on an F2 a second generation or a back cross it's 96% with the best will in the world just examining photographs of a fish does not give 99% certainty. 80% maybe, 90 if you're lucky, depends on the species, depends on what you're looking at. And it might take several opinions to get a best view, but it's not as certain as 99%. The Record Fish Committee uh, adopted this about a decade ago, and they do have uh, record claims open to DNA tested fish for roach, rudd and crucians but there's not been any real progress on this about the only fish I know of that was double checked was Duncan Charman's roach uh, the Willow, um, sorry, Gold Valley crucian the one that was 414 was double checked and that proved to be a hybrid Duncan Charman's fish that did look a bit funny was actually a true roach and that illustrated something about colour. 
it was caught at night and it does seem that fish like roach and rudd change color at night they can change color during the day if you catch them off somewhere with a sandy bottom or something like that put them in a very dark keep net they will get darker quite quickly within 20 30 minutes the thing about DNA testing was that over a decade ago there were one or two university uh, science labs that were willing to do this for not very much at all, um, 20 pounds a sample, but it seems at the moment the only way to get a sample tested is through a commercial outfit that will charge something like 300 pounds a sample, so it's not cheap. It's not something that you say, oh I caught this fish, I'm not sure it's my PB, I want to get it checked. Who do I send it to? Well, there's people you can find to send it to, but that's the sort of cost they might be looking to uh, charge you. There are one or two other photos to uh, take if you do photograph a fish. One is the with roach and rudd. It's known as the um, ventral keel. And this is the area of the body between the pelvic fins, the pair of fins at the base of the fish and the anus going towards the tail there. With rudd it's a sharp keel. With roach it's a rounded keel and with the hybrids it's somewhere in between. And when you just take a flat on body shot of a fish you can't see that. But by holding the fish upside down and looking down the fish towards the tail, you can photograph it. It's not easy, but it needs to be done. One final point before I conclude this video is the question of whether hybrids are fertile. Fish hybrids are fertile, unlike mules, which are a hybrid of a donkey and a horse. But fish hybrids have quite a few barriers. They Fertilisation isn't very often successful with uh, the eggs from a hybrid. The males tend to be almost sterile and there are lots of genetic defects in the resultant fry. So survival rates are quite low. So if you do get um, post F1 hybrids, F2s, then the chance of catching a, a specimen are very, 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 very small. Back crosses, which is where a hybrid breeds with one of the parent fish's true species, so a roach bream hybrid breeding with a roach or a bream, are slightly more likely because the males, the true species males, are, are much more viable than a hybrid male. So there's a chance of one of those. And the resultant fish is going to look, if it's say a roach bream with a roach, is going to look much more roachy than the parent roach bream hybrid and that can be quite uh, certainly if that happened with a roach rod you'd really struggle to tell the difference without a DNA test it might look a little bit odd such fish do exist in the wild the odds on catching one are very slight uh, in the next video I'll show you one or two fish where it's just possible that has happened. I hope you've enjoyed this video, it's a fairly long one, there's a lot of technical stuff and uh, there'll be a plenty more to come. Please subscribe, uh, I'm trying to build this channel up and uh, there's plenty more to come.